Greetings! Anton here with a uh, fairly short uh, Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades devlog for you this week. This has been this has been one of those weeks, as any of you saw the the, the thumbnail for this video, might have guessed. Uh, basically, it's sometimes when you're doing game development, you have a week where everything goes wrong, or at least things that you were really excited about uh and thought were essentially done deals suddenly weren't or ran into uh into problems that just ate a bunch of time so what i thought i would do because i don't have anything quite ready to show you this week is i thought i would just give you two examples of uh what can happen there and what the state of those things are for the game so basically both of these are a result of the night vision systems, one of which uh, has sort of like uncovered the severity of a behavior that I always knew was present in the game engine, in Unity, and frankly put most game engines, um, but is worse in this case. And then another one that is just about sort of like <laughs> dealing with the legacy of an eight year long project. So the first one of those relates to um, something called floating point precision. Uh, some of you may have heard that term before. The other way to describe it is like, have you ever taken a whole bunch of uh, the, the shotgun shells in H3 that can propel you into the air and you decided to blow up like 60 of those and just went off into space and noticed as you went off into space, weird things happened to you. Like your controllers started visually jittering and the meshes started getting all wibbly. This happens in a bunch of other games too. If you get really far from the uh, center of the world. And if you never knew why this happens, um, the easiest way to describe this, and this is somewhat abstracted, is that any number that you have in a game on, on a computer has a finite amount of precision to store how specific that number is. So but, uh, well, we can think of this in terms of we have a number and then a decimal place and then a whole bunch of more you know, numbers following it out to some finite amount. Uh, all numbers in a game engine, in a piece of software are like this. They have some limited number of uh, three, how many digits of pi, you know, is, you know, sort of thing. So what happens is as a number gets bigger, i.e. that decimal place moves to the right, instead of three point dot, 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 it becomes 30 dot, 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 dot. 300 dot 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 3000 dot 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 obviously this is actually occurring in binary under the hood but we won't think about that but suffice to say as that number gets bigger we essentially lose some of that precision that was in dealing with the very very precise small part of the positioning or the rotation or the scale of an object and that is eaten up by the fact that the first part of the number is very big this manifests in that, say, instead of being right in the center of the scene at zero, 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 if we are 3000 meters to the side, suddenly that's enough of what's called a precision loss in those numbers that the exactitude of the position of all the points that make up a model, all the pixels we might want to draw on the screen based on the points of those model are no longer exactly where we want them to be. And this uh, with this visually manifests as a little bit of jitter, a little bit of imprecision that change as our as our like the angle that we're looking at that given thing is our position in space, all of the like angles trigonometrically that we're using to view that thing are also changing and they are they have a loss of precision. And if we get 30,000 out, things get even more wibbly. Now, the thing is, the way night vision in H3 works um, is kind of the hardest way possible you could imagine representing this. The way most video games do it is they just, it's a post-processing effect. It's the frame is already drawn and they just manipulate. It's like opening up levels in Photoshop where they're like, we're going to just drag the bottom point to here and the middle point to here. And the top point to here, Dunzos add a bit of noise. Of course, this is H3. This is deep simulation. This is a bunch of nerds doing things the very hard way because that's cool. And in this case, night vision in H3 is like actually a physically rendered scope, which is another simulated camera. There's some lens effects. It's a whole separate rendering step. And then the view from that camera is being drawn on a tiny little mesh about that big 
that's being placed in front of your eye. The problem with that is that that's a very small object with a very small tolerance relative to your eye having to render an image that converges with the standard game camera. So it's super sensitive to these differences in precision. And so you can actually go see this right now um, with the version that's on the experimental branch. If you load up the Dooney range and just pull an, one of the night vision goggles out right now, and I didn't notice this until working this week, and you pop them on your head, you'll notice if you just keep your head still that the view will be doing this like one pixel jitter. That's precision loss in effect. And at the moment, it doesn't look like there's going to be an easy way or maybe a way at all to fix that problem, at least with the way that night vision in the game works. And so, um, Ole thankfully like ran around this morning and, and it, uh, sort of audited it in a bunch of the other scenes. Um, it seems to be good enough in most of the game scenes, but in the game scenes that are really big, which is like Winter Wasteland, uh, the Dooney Range, uh, Rot Wieners, um, and the very far periphery from the center, even of institution, some amount of jitter become visual jitter becomes apparent. Um, and obviously in the Dooney range, you can get, that's the biggest scene in the game. You can get five, six kilometers away from the origin. It gets real bad, uh, real fast, but it's, it's actually noticeable right where you spawn because you're spawning about a kilometer or so away from the origin right when the scene opens. So this is to say that that that's the, that was one of those like, oh no, this thing that we thought were a feature locked and done and we were moving on to the fun part is kind of messed up. So I have to do a little bit of reconsideration about how central I want that to be as a mechanic, because it's one of those things that if something is like a fun side toy that someone can pull out, try around, do some fun things with, there's a certain expectation of functionality. And if there's like a take and hold character that's entirely built around being in night vision, there's an expectation of functionalities like this. But all of a sudden, if that isn't going to be workable at all in Northeast Dakota as a level, then that becomes it becomes less of a sensible thing for me to invest the time in building rich gameplay that is all that is centered around being in night vision the whole time if it's just not going to work in large levels. So it's something that we're, I'm still talking it out with Ole. I need to, honestly, I just need to spend the weekend after the stress of this week and running into this problem. I just need to spend a bunch of time this weekend, like figuring out my priorities, seeing how intractable of a problem this is, seeing if there's any tricks that we can pull um, to ameliorate it at all. And then just making some feature decisions from there. And then the second thing is that, uh, that we ran into that I believe is mostly fixed as of this morning is um, is basically a, a couple times over the course of this game, I have manipulated, I've played around with some of the particle effects related to smoke and muzzle smoke. And for a whole bunch of arcane Unity Engine and when we started this game reasons, um, it's been a circumstance where the smoke looks really good in certain circumstances and not so good in others. A while back, I had actually done some visual improvements to the smoke, or so I thought, that got it to behave a little more uh, how I expected it to, or so I thought. Um, and I had just, unbeknownst to me, because I hadn't played that mode in a while, uh, actually broken how it looks in really dark scenes. Um, and so Ole has managed to come up with a sort of hybrid uh lighting solution it's still like a classic vertex lit shader in a bunch of ways because there's some modern particle effect rendering i mean you've played you've probably played plenty of games nowadays whether it's like valheim or fortnite or something whatever that have very very pretty particles and you can definitely do particle lighting nowadays in this very high-end way and it's very expensive to render especially when you think about a particle system like a cloud of smoke where you might be stacking like 20 to 50 particles in front of each other, that gets explosively expensive in VR. And so we needed a solution that would behave, would not exhibit the negative properties that have been a problem with these particles in H3, which is basically they do weird things 
relative to flashlights, which I thought I had fixed, and no, I had not fixed for a bunch of reasons. They don't respond properly to certain types of baked environment lighting, uh, don't respond to shadows correctly from like the directional light, so like an effect will be indoors and look as bright as it does outdoors. Um, and there was a last one. What was the last one? Oh yeah, and, and reacting to spotlights correctly. Um, sort of thing and is having some good directional behavior. So it looks like we now actually have a solution that will fix that, but I haven't been able to widely test it yet, which is one of the reasons why I'm not showing it off because I just learned the lesson from the night vision that showing off features early before they're very deeply tested in every scene can have some big gotchas. You could be like, oh no, it's broken. So, uh, so I am in the process of basically integrating this new shader into a bunch of the muzzle effects and then just running around the entire game in all of these different lighting situations and measuring the effect and making sure it does what it is supposed to. Um, if it does, the, po the, the positive part about this finally is that, as I said, these effects should respond to flashlights correctly, which means I can finish working on the updated flashlights, which will have a longer range, be a little more high power, and as such be more functional in the game without messing up those effects or completely blinding you when you when they're sort of shining through those effects. Um, but they should also look really good in the pitch black or near pitch black scenes like Meat Grinder and things like that. Um, yeah, and just like a long standing thing that I have, I've always felt with that set of effects, like you know, any improvement that I got working over here would make them worse over here. And it just seemed like a no win situation. And it looks like that might be at an end. So that has me excited. Um, but yeah, but it, 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 on the positive side, I made a bunch of progress with night oriented and dark scene oriented stuff this week. Um, the, uh, the, I'll show you next week. The, you can turn the light off in the indoor range for funny reasons. I'll explain next with a indoor range is like the oldest scene in the game. And the way I did the lighting in it is totally stupid and busted. And because it's totally stupid and busted, it is like the one scene in the game that I can actually just toggle the light on and off in. Um, and I've, I've made a new updated and fixed version of the friendly 45 scene at night. And so I will show you folks that next week as well, uh, as well as some fun surprises and some new features that are coming that are tied to night vision. So I thank you for your patience. As I said, it was just, it was uh, last night. I was just exasperated, exhausted, frustrated at just all the difficulties and it was not coming together. Um, but a number of things are already better this morning. I just need more time to get this next set of things together to show you folks. Um, so should hopefully have the next testing build for y'all to play with and run around in the dark and scare the pants off yourselves next week. So hope you all have yourselves a wonderful weekend and I will uh, see you all soon. Peace.